As I was a walking one morning at ease, viewing the leaves as they fell from the trees, all in slow motion appearing to be. And those that had withered, they fell from the trees. What's the life of a man any more than the leaves? A man has his season, so why should we grieve? Although in this life we appear fine and gay, like the leaves we will wither and soon fade away. What's the life of a man any more than a leaf? Sydney, born of convict blood and sweat, had a brash upbringing. But opportunity and adventure encouraged emigration to the New World, and the colony grew rapidly. And, in 1842, just 44 years after the arrival of the first fleet, Sydney was officially declared Australia's first city. Birth and death are part of a city's life cycle. The old burial ground, situated where Sydney Town Hall now stands, served the colony up until 1820 when it was replaced by the Devonshire Street Cemetery, also known as Sandhills or Brickfield Cemetery because of its position at Brickfield Hill, where Central Railway now stands. It was a rambling and disorganised burial ground and, because of the population explosion following the 1851 discovery of gold, by 1860 it had reached capacity. Bishop Broughton, writing to the Colonial Secretary in 1843, described the Church of England burial ground as So completely occupied that decency and propriety were outraged and it was impossible to find room for more bodies. In 1860, the Colonial Secretary for Lands, John Robertson, announced the search for a new cemetery. Persons who may be willing to dispose of not less than 100 acres of land, which may be suitable for a general cemetery on or near the Great Southern Railway between Sydney and Parramatta, are requested to communicate with this department, describing the position of the land and stating the area and price. The following year, the government purchased 200 acres of the Liberty Plains estate, Haslam's Creek, near Homebush, on the Sydney to Parramatta railway line. The owners, Messrs Cohen and Benjamin, receiving the sum of £10 per acre. Surveyor General stressed. The spot chosen should be capable of being cultured and beautiful, as is frequently the case with other cemeteries. Areas were set aside for Roman Catholic, Anglican, Presbyterian, Wesleyan, Independent, Congregational, Jewish, Lutheran, primitive Methodists, and a general section. Each had its own management trust. Sectarianism did not stop at the cemetery gates. The new 
new cemetery at Haslam's Creek was consecrated in 1867 to coincide with the closure of Devonshire Street Cemetery. It soon became known as the Necropolis, the ancient Greek name for the city of the dead, the sleeping city. The first burial in 1867 was a pauper, John Whalen, aged 18 years, a native of Ireland. He'd been in the colony for nine months. Eight years later, the Sydney Morning Herald reported... The necropolis grounds are tastefully laid out with shrubs and parterres divided by neatly kept paths. Chapels have been erected for each denomination in which to read the burial service over the last remains of those who profess to be its tenants, the style of architecture being generally modern Gothic. Western Sydney was also growing, and before long the locals called for a new name for the cemetery and their railway station. In 1876, resident Richard Slee wrote to the Cumberland Mercury suggesting, Rookwood is a pleasant name and a very appropriate one, for there are many crows in the neighbourhood. The new name found favour, and by 1878, Rookwood was in common use for both the cemetery and the railway station. The Victorian Christian expression of death was one of solemn funerals, horse-drawn processions, ornate sandstone carved headstones, often with poetic inscriptions, family vaults, ornate statuary depicting angels, floral tributes, and expansive parklands where the dead resided in pleasant memorial gardens. Sydney's undertakers led the funeral procession. Flowers on the coffin, in the hearse, and on the grave play a symbolic role in the transition of the departed. Rookwood's wild heritage roses, mostly hybrid plants of great beauty, are world famous. The roses of Rookwood, they climb and they twine, finding their way through gravesides and time. All in their beauty as a garden should be. And remind us of loved ones gone from the tree. The rose speaks of love silently in a language known only to the heart. Man is harder than iron, stronger than stone, and more fragile than a rose. A Turkish proverb. The railway has been intrinsically linked to the story of Rookwood Necropolis. It was a deciding factor in the cemetery's establishment and the mortuary train operated for over 80 years until 1948. In 1867, the Sydney Morning Herald announced a twice daily service from Sydney's central station number one, stopping at stations along the way to collect mourners. Tickets were one shilling each way. Corpses travelled free. What's the life of a man any more than the leaves 
A man has his season, so why should we grieve? Although in this life we appear fine and gay. Like the leaves we will wither and soon fade away. The government wanted a separate funeral terminal from the main central station and built an imposing sandstone receiving house at Regent Street, Redfern. A similarly imposing building was also constructed in 1869 at the very centre of the cemetery. Colonial architect James Barnett. The two receiving houses show the application of Gothic architecture to a novel purpose. Central Station has a wide platform, a ticket office opening into two vestibules with retiring rooms and a carriage port surrounded by a bell coat. Both buildings are of sandstone and appropriately decorated with sculpture representing angels, cherubs, pears, apples and pomegranates. <laughs> was told a half hour before the train departed as a warning to mourners and visitors. Another darker side of Rookwood was its neighbour, the Rookwood Asylum. In 1879, the government purchased 1,300 acres and Although originally planned for a boys' training institution, in 1893 it opened as Rookwood Asylum. Because of the severe economic depression of the 1890s, the Rookwood Asylum became a home for infirm and destitute men and boys. In 1913, it became a state hospital and later an aged care home. And even later again, in 1966, it became Lidcombe Hospital. During its darkest years, many paupers from the asylum and Sydney's hospitals and benevolent institutions were buried in unmarked graves. Over 30,000 children, including many babies from Sydney hospitals, were buried in unmarked communal graves. Today, those children are remembered by an expansive garden, the Rookwood Circle of Love. Death comes to all, be they old or young, rich or poor, and over one million departed now reside in Rookwood's 700 acres of parklands. The notorious, including convicts, gangsters, and the bushranger Captain Moonlight, share with the notable, including suffragette Louisa Lawson, comedian Roy Reen, fiery politician Big Jack Lang, Sydney Morning Herald founder 
John Fairfax, and the 19th century celebrated Chinese businessman Kuang Tat. There are war graves where the patriotic, gallant and brave now rest far from the battleground. A martyr's memorial commemorates the six million Jews of the Holocaust. Our multicultural society has many ways of marking the transition from life to death, from simple to ornate, with silence or with noise. Some customs called for intricate burial ceremonies. Others call for simplicity. Like any city, Rookwood has stakeholders, funeral directors, stonemasons, florists, tour guides, clergy, Councillors, cemetery maintenance staff, all play a role, as do genealogists and historians who use the cemetery to record Sydney's history. What's the life of a man? Rookwood Cemetery is Sydney's sleeping city, breaking down the silence between life and death. Now if you've seen the leaves just a few days ago So beautiful and bright they all seem to grow A frost came upon them and withered them all A storm came upon them and down they did fall What's the life of a man any more than the leaves? A man has his season, so why should we grieve? Although in this life we appear fine and gay, like the leaves we will wither and soon fade away. The roses of Rookwood, they climb and they twine, finding their way through grave sides and time. All in their beauty as a garden should be And remind us of loved ones gone from the tree What's the life of a man any more than the leaves? A man has his season, so why should we grieve? Although in this life we appear fine and gay Like the leaves we will wither and soon fade away. Go down to the graveyard and there you will see those that have gone like the leaves from the trees when age and affliction upon us do fall. Like the leaves we must wither and down we must fall. What's the life of a man any more than the leaves? A man has his season, so why should we grieve? Although in this life we appear fine and gay, like the leaves we will wither and soon fade away. Like the leaves we
we will wither and soon fade away.